Hi, it's Chaplin73 here. I'm here to do another interview today. I have uh, the pleasure of having Paul Neen with me today from Creative Folk. Um, we're going to just crack on with the questions uh, as usual, um, the usual format. So I will start by saying, Paul, can you tell me a bit about yourself and your creative output, please? Yeah, sure. Hi, Darren. Um, it's really good to, uh, to be on your uh, YouTube channel today. Um, yeah, I mean, basically my creative output, it's a good question. Um, I've basically been involved in art my whole life. Um, it's never been my full-time career. Um, it was always kind of a sort of sideline hobby, passion uh, type of thing. Um, I guess I took it, sort of started taking it uh, more seriously. Uh, I moved to South Africa, uh, must be almost 13 years ago now. I've been back in the UK um, three years um, and started doing sort of solo shows and group shows and stuff like that in South Africa and in Cape Town and Amanus, uh, Johannesburg. Um, and, uh, but my work at the time was predominantly, um, I, suppose, I suppose you could call it sort of social commentary, uh, political, um, especially being in South Africa, you know, it's quite easy to kind of make a statement about the political situation in South Africa. Um, a lot of it was also to do with uh, a lot of animal kind of conservation. So. The, the rhino poaching, um, elephant tusks, all of that sort of stuff. Um, but I guess I kind of found myself um, sort of every now and again, like a really great idea would happen um, and I'd get excited about it and I would do a theme based around that kind of um, idea or principle. Um, and then I'd sort of move on to the next one. Um, but I almost found myself uh, putting myself under quite a lot of pressure to come up with these kind of amazing, incredible ideas. And uh, sort of with the power of the internet, you kind of go on there and you suddenly realize that some other clever buggers come up with uh, that concept already. So then you find yourself going back to the drawing board. Um, but uh, so I started to sort of try and sort of free myself up a bit. And um, again, with the, you know, with the, the lovely in internet um, and Facebook and uh, all of that sort of stuff, I got to sort of see a lot of other people's creative outputs. And that kind of really started to inspire me to try new things, to try different methods, to try different techniques. And um, before I moved to South Africa, I was living in London and would go to a lot of the shows. And so we're probably talking when I first moved to London was probably 16 years ago now. Um, and I sort of really sort of, my, my eyes were basically open to um, sort of the street art that was kind of coming up. So there was a lot of like pure evil, obviously Banksy, uh, Fail, Obey, um, you know, all of those kind of characters. Um, and I sort of realized, you know, that sort of, you, sort of playing around with spray paints, but not necessarily, I personally wasn't kind of going out on the streets and doing stuff. Um, but um, I was certainly inspired uh, by these people and sort of started using spray paint and sort of the stencil type stuff in my work. Um, but I still wanted to kind of have a fine art aspect to it as well. So I'd yeah. use that in combination with acrylic paints and brushes and on canvases and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's a difficult one. Like I, I suppose some people might sort of be able to kind of go, yes, this is my style. This is what I do. And you can kind of instantly recognize without them even saying, you know, you know exactly who that person's work is. Um, but for me, I almost... I'm almost trying to rebel against that pigeonhole type sort of thing and, and want to kind of just, as I say, I see so much stuff on the internet and it, you know, and I get sort of so excited and I'll kind of rush off and, and try this and try that. Some stuff won't work, some stuff will, but I still feel it's all part of my creative journey. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And you know, and I, as I say, some stuff is an absolute failure, but I always think that, you know, out of that, there will be something that you can take away for your next piece, which, it always kind of keeps encouraging me to keep going. Um, yeah, and you know, I just, I'm just enjoying what I'm doing and by not having sort of that personal pressure of I need to create the, the, the world's greatest masterpiece with every single painting I do kind of frees me up and I feel like a lot lighter in my painting now, mm -hmm. uh, which is a really nice feeling. And you generally just paint what you want to paint? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I guess, um, I know that you're probably going to ask me a question about creative folk, but I guess part of that is where kind of creative folk came from. Mm -hmm. um, because what I wanted to do, so when I came back from South Africa, um, I decided that I wanted to kind of keep this momentum going of my art and to try and sort of make it my full-time living. Um, I still got a job when I came back from um, 
from South Africa because um, I've always worked in marketing um, and I got a job for a short period of time when I came back. But there, it's always been sort of on the back burner in the back of my mind, like how can I kind of create a business around my passion and the, around the passion for other people's art. Yeah. Um, and Creative Folk kind of was that sort of um, opportunity, I, I guess you could call it, um, to be able to, to make that happen. Um, so by not having a paulneen.co.uk where someone would go on it and it almost looked like some sort of schizophrenic type paint, you know, where he's got this style and that style and this and that. Um, I wanted to be able to kind of just have that freedom that I'm operating under a completely different thing um, yeah. that also then allows other artists uh, to be able to bring their work as well and showcase, you know, all of the kind of amazing talent that we've got going on in the UK. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've, you've touched on it already, the creative folk. Um, so, so what actually inspired you to start that? You've kind of, you've kind of already delved into that. Yeah, um, as and, I said. What, what exactly is creative folk? Tell us a bit more about creative folk. Yeah, so creative folk basically is an online um, art gallery, I guess you could call it. Uh, we basically at the moment offer original artwork for sale. Uh, we have um, open edition prints. Uh, we are going to be having a sort of a hand finished print section as well. Um, and at the moment, um, it started um, just over a year ago when I sort of first sort of really started pushing it. Um, I built the website myself, um, but although now I've actually have a web developer to help me with it, because I'm certainly no web developer um, guru uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but I kind of built the bare bones of the, of the, uh, of the site. Um, and basically, for me, I want to be able to kind of offer customers um, incredible art, um, but not the prices that are associated with galleries that sell incredible art, um, you know, but all out, you know, for example, like the prints that we offer are all done on 310 gram um, etching paper. Um, it's, they're all Giclée art prints. Um, they all come with a certificate of authenticity. Um, and you know, it's and basically I've just sort of been spending this time um, getting in touch with artists that I really admire and really respect. Um, and to be quite honest, I'm quite humbled, you know, of sort of how open uh, to the idea of coming onto Creative Folk they all are. I mean, you know, in the last two three weeks, um, we've had uh, Raffaella Bertolini come on board, mm -hmm. Mark Fox, uh, Mr. Bunny. Um, We've got, um, I've got, just, sorry, just about to add this week, um, Indy Mathuru. Yeah, yeah. Aru, sorry. Um, whose work I think is incredible. Um, I'm in talks with Caroline Reed, uh, Matt Dixon. So we're getting some like really sort of, you know, for me, quite big names coming on board, which I hope kind of encourages other artists to sort of come forward and, you know, we can chat with them and get them on board as well. But as I say, you know, for me, it's because I'm an artist and I know sort of where they're coming from. Um, you know, we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the artists so that they can carry on doing exactly what they're best at, which is obviously creating new pieces. Yeah. So, um, for, for example, you know, with the prints, um, basically all they need to do is send us the high res images of their work. Um, we add the work to the website. We do the descriptions, we sort out all the back end sort of stuff on the website. We do all the marketing. When an order's placed, we will go and actually get the, the, the print printed, uh, mm -hmm. do all the postage and packing. Um, if there's any complaints or if an order happens to go missing or whatever, we deal with all of that. So they can kind of just sort of take a back seat and just carry on, you know, doing you know, what they want to do, which is obviously uh, creating new works and we will take care of the rest of it for them. And, That's the, great, all, yeah. and all of that, we only take a 20% commission as well, wow. which I think is like a lot lower from the research that I've done than a lot of other places. So I've kind of, I feel like I've sort of, when I've been on Facebook, oh sorry, social media, um, and you hear the sort of gripes and the, the annoyance from artists, you know, when they're dealing with certain people or certain companies or whatever, um, you know, I've sort of tried to take all of that on board and create a platform that I feel is fair um, completely transparent, you know, the, the artists know exactly how much the printing costs and how much the postage costs and, you know, what they're going to get in return, et cetera, et cetera. So we're trying to make it as transparent as possible. And in return for the customer, they can walk away with a lovely piece of um, artwork 
um, but again at a fair price. Yeah, I mean, I, I do keep trying to stress this to my friends that, that um, a lot of artwork is actually a lot more affordable than people think it is. Yeah. Uh, especially, especially for artists who, who are starting out or still trying to find their way or not that well established. Buying yeah. and investing in a piece of art um, at the beginning of somebody's career. You know, I look at some of the artists I've been following for many years and I wish I'd bought art from them five, six years ago because Absolutely. they're out of my budget now, you know. But, Absolutely. but you know, yeah. it, it, you live and learn, don't you? So, so I have yeah. to buying artwork from, from people that I can afford now. And, you know, it, it, I love it. You know, I, I love collecting art. I love looking at other people's art and, and I love creating art. So, Absolutely. Know, uh, what you said earlier about them the, the setting up the, the website, I, I quite often hear that, you know, artists have to embrace that entrepreneurial spirit, don't they, uh, of, of just learning things and getting on with things and getting started. Yeah. Which, which is great. I, I, I love what you're doing with Creative Folk. I think it's, it's Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's certainly been a huge uh, learning curve for me, um, but it's one that I'm incredibly passionate about, you know, and I feel like I hope that I'm coming across as, you know, as sort of being genuine and, you know, I'm not in this to sort of make millions or rip people off and, you know, I, I genuinely want to kind of help, you know, and, and, you know, I feel incredibly proud when I kind of go onto the website and I'm adding, you know, a, another Raffaella piece or an indie piece or a Matt yeah. Dixon, you know, it's, it's, it gets me excited, you know, and I want to be able to showcase these artists um, because they deserve it. Um, you know, yeah, yeah, they're, and they're some incredible talented. talent there, yeah. Definitely. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, so, um, as I say, yeah, it's been it's been a it's been a quite a learning curve, but I do feel that my background in marketing um, is it, you know is helping uh, you know, and obviously that's sort of something now that we've started you know kind of getting a few artists on board. I mean, by the time I've got the current artists all on there, I would be up to about twelve um, artists in total, and I've only really, in all honesty, sort of been pushing it or felt that the website was up to a, a, a level of quality where I felt confident, confident enough to be able to go out and sort of try and lure these, these wonderful artists onto the site. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. I do know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it sounds really great. Um, what are you excited about at the moment with regards to basic folk or with regards to your own practice? Um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, it's, it's one of those things where I didn't quite realise necessarily how much time would be taken up with creative folk. <laughs> Um, so in terms of in terms of my actual creative output, um, I would say that's kind of quite minimal at the moment. I mean, I've got a few ideas that I want to kind of crack on with. Um, but at the moment, in all honesty, I'm kind of dedicating my whole time to kind of really kind of get uh, creative folk uh, sort of to where I want to a level that I want it to be. It's, and I also, uh, in all honesty, I never quite realized um, how responsible that I feel. It's all very well kind of going and luring these amazing, talented artists on board and everything but you want to be able to go back to them and say yes you've sold this yes you've done this yes this is happening that's happening you know so now i actually feel like i've got kind of a responsibility towards these artists to kind of um yeah to make things happen basically and you know to carry to carry things through um but uh, yeah as i say i do have um a few things that are on the back burner at the moment that i do want to kind of crack on with and you know i can feel myself kind of you know wanting to kind of get some paint back on the canvas again but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd say for the last few months, that's been very sort of uh, few and far between at the moment, just with setting up uh, Creative Folk. Because at the moment, you know, it's pretty much me. You know, I write the articles every week. Um, you know, I'm busy sort of emailing all the artists who I want to get involved in with it, uh, putting on all the products, going and visiting the web developer and kind of giving them the big long list of all the things that I want to, uh, to improve on the site. Um, but it's all exciting stuff, you know, and it's it's... I feel kind of quite a, um, quite sort of proud of myself of sort of, you know, having that initial concept or idea. And now, you know, I'm sort of I'm talking to you and, you know, I've had, we had an article in the um, Daily Mail, I think it was last year or the year before, when we raised the question about who painted Devolved Parliament. And obviously that then sort of, you know, there was the whole sort of Mason Storm thing. And, you know, just these kind of like little incidents that would never have happened if it wasn't for actually kind of carrying through on on a sort of, uh, on, a, on a, I guess, a light bulb moment. Mm -hmm. You mentioned briefly that you're writing articles. Do you want to expand on that slightly? Yeah, so, I mean, basically, you know, in terms of the website and stuff, we have the, the, the product sort of section of it, but there's also a, a news section. 
Um, so that, you know, we, we, we once a month uh, try and interview an artist uh, with our In the Spotlight series. So we've done people like Cairn Griffiths, uh, Mason Storm, My Dog Size, Black the Rat, um, you know, so some fairly kind of well-known people. Um, and then also it's just whatever kind of news comes out, you know, and, uh, you know, that sort of captures my interest. And I think, yeah, you know, that's, that's a worthy uh, sort of story to, to write about. But we try and write it in a kind of um, down to earth, you know, how we feel about the subject, you know, rather than it just being sort of a factual piece, you know, we're mm -hmm. sort of, just, especially, you know, and, it, and it's all obviously based around um, the arts and the creative industry. So, you know, the last piece that I wrote, which was on, on the site yesterday, was just, you know, the question of will COVID kill the art sector? Mm. You know, and it's, it's sort of looking at, you know, is the government doing anything to kind of help keep the art sector afloat and, you know, asking those kind of questions. So, yeah, some of it sort of is quite sort of heavy and deep and other ones are a bit <laughs> lighthearted, but hopefully, you know, we've got an interesting mixture going on there. No, no, sounds great. Sounds great. How do people um, get access to that? Is it just on the website or can they? Yeah, 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 no, no. I basically, just go to www.creativefolk.co.uk, um, go and have a look at all the original artwork, go and have a look at all the lovely prints um, and go and, read, go and read all the articles. Yeah. Yeah, ideal. Um, and what are your plans for the future for Creative Folk? Have you got anything that you, that you could tell us today? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, there's no great big scoops or anything like that. I mean, at the <laughs> moment, you know, especially with sort of COVID, you know, we're sort of everyone's feeling a little restricted. Um, but it's, I guess, carry on as we are in terms of, you know, keep contacting uh, more artists, keep getting more products on there. Um, obviously, we have a, well, not obviously, but we do have a marketing kind of campaign set up to try and sort of drive more traffic to the site. Um, you know, in, in the big sort of wonderful schemes of everything, you know, ideally I'd love to be able to kind of get a group show with some of the creative art, uh, creative folk artists together and actually have a proper, you know, real show, you know, rather yeah. than everything just being online. Um, I'd love to have a creative folk gallery one day, you know, who knows, who knows what fabulous. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, you know, it's good to have these goals. No, it is. It is indeed. And, uh, and as creative people, we're, we're constantly coming up with, um, ideas in our heads aren't we so. absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> keep us awake at night well exactly. thank you very much for taking some time today to speak to me um it's great exactly. to hear about what's happening um with creative folk i think it sounds really interesting and i will keep my eye on the website and those articles um i haven't got any more questions for you today paul i just wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time and um, spending the time with me today thanks very much darren no problem. Thanks a lot. Cheers. And that's all for now.